Hi, this is the Science Chef. In this video, we'll be answering last year's WASC GCA Chemistry Alternative to Practicals. This qualitative analysis, and here you are given a series of tests carried out on some inorganic salts, and you are asked to complete the table. As you can see here, some parts of the table were filled, and others were left blank, and um, we are asked to complete it. So you will use the test and the observations to deduce the inference as the case may be. So the first one says A plus heat. An observation is colorless, odorless gas, turned lime water, milky. Fine. So what could be the inference from this? Colorless, odorless gas, turned lime water, milky. Which gas turns lime water, milky? Or which gas is turned lime water, milky? There are two of them carbon 4 oxide that's co2 and sulfur 4 oxide those are the two gases that turn lime water milky however the color and the odor can be used to distinguish them both of them are colorless yes but sulfur 4 oxide is not odorless sulfur 4 oxide has an irritating smell in fact sulfur 4 oxide smells like burnt matches or burning matches you put it that way but carbon dioxide has no smell so that is why the correct inference to this is carbon four oxide and for carbon four oxide to be evolved it means that the ion present is the trouser carbonate four ion that's co32 minus and that is so because most trouser carbonate four salts decompose on heating apart from the group one trouser carbonate four let's go further so I told that the residue from A plus water plus litmus paper. In other words, when the residue was added to water and tested with litmus, what happened? I told that it dissolved. It dissolved. That is a clue to form a colorless solution, which turned what red litmus paper blue. That is another clue. So for it to dissolve, it means that the residue is what soluble. That is one. Then two that it turned red litmus paper blue means that residue is a base so the inference is that the residue is a soluble base so next test the solution from b the solution obtained from this from dissolving the residue in water plus sodium hydroxide in drops and then in excess now this could have been anything but they gave us a clue here as per the ions present that's calcium ion and since calcium ion is present it means that there is a specific observation that they expect from us yes we know that calcium ion forms a white precipitate in drops with sodium hydroxide and the precipitate does not dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide right that's why here we write white powdery we have to write the nature of the precipitate because it can be gelatinous right but since it is calcium it is powdery and since it's white powdery precipitate it is not only calcium that forms a powdery precipitate lead 2 also forms a white powdery precipitate with sodium hydroxide in what drops are we together remember to write your precipitate in full write it in full don't write ppt write it in full now in excess this is where you now separate calcium from lead 2 if it were lead 2 ion the precipitate would have dissolved in excess sodium hydroxide because lead 2 hydroxide is amphoteric but calcium hydroxide is not amphoteric so that's why the precipitate remains insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide which is why we have calcium ion being present then the next test is on salt b and in salt b salt b is added to water and when it's added to water we are told that it is a soluble so that is the inference as a soluble salt so what happened for it to be considered as a soluble salt it means salt b dissolved in water if it dissolves in water what will be the color of the solution for us to get that first of all come down and check if you are given any clue on the type of ion especially the cat ion that is present in the salt because it is the cat ions most times that are responsible for the colors of the salt i say most times not all the time though the cation present in B is aluminum, aluminum 3 plus. And aluminum salts are white. And since all aluminum salts are white, it means that in solution, it will be what? Colorless. So that's where we have it got dissolved to form a colorless 
solution. If it were copper two that was present, it would have been dissolved to form a blue solution. So take note of that. Then the next test says solution from D plus aqueous sodium hydroxide in drops and then in excess. Now we know that already the ion present is what aluminium ion. However, the inference based on this test must not just be aluminium ion. I will because you are told that it's a white gelatinous precipitate which dissolves in excess sodium hydroxide. And we know that it is not only aluminium ion that gives us white gelatinous precipitate. Of course, zinc ion also gives us white gelatinous precipitate which is soluble in excess sodium hydroxide solution. So that's why our inference here is zinc and aluminium present. So the next test is what solution from D plus ammonia in drops and then in excess. Okay, we are told that aluminum ion is what present, and we know that we use aqueous sodium hydroxide and aqueous ammonia most times to identify cations based on the YEC O level syllabus. Okay, so aluminum ion forms a white gelatinous precipitate with aqueous ammonia in drops yes in drops and that precipitate is insoluble in excess ammonia it is only zinc ion that will dissolve in excess aqueous ammonia are we together so that is why the reaction with aqueous ammonia is used as a confirmatory test for zinc ion but since it is aluminum ion it means that the precipitate remained what insoluble all right and then the last test here solution from d solution from d again plus aqueous silver trazonitrate 5 and or dilute trazonitrate 5 acid after which aqueous ammonia was added in what excess whenever you see these three reagents just know that you are testing for what halide ions and in YEG, the most common halide ions that is always tested is what chloride ion yes they might test for bromide ion and iodide ion but the most common one is chloride ion which is a white precipitate bromide ion that's br minus is a cream precipitate while iodide ion that's i minus is a yellow precipitate so what happens when you add a solution containing chloride ion to silver trazonitrate 5 solution how do you know it's chloride ion because we have been told already that chloride ion is what present and confirmed since it's chloride ion that is present then the chloride ion will react with the silver trazonitrate 5 to form white precipitate and in that case we will suspect a chloride ion and what trouser carbon 4 ion because trouser carbon 4 ion can also combine with silver ion to form a white precipitate of silver trioxocarbonate 4 right if we add dilute hno3 what happens if trioxocarbonate 4 were to be present it will do produce effervescence and release carbon dioxide in other words if a trioxocarbonate 4 ion is present the precipitate will dissolve when dilute trioxocarbonate 5 acid is added because a gas will be involved that carbon dioxide gas will be what evolved but since we are told that chloride ion was present or is present then it means that the precipitate does not dissolve or did not dissolve that knocks off what trials of carbon four iron and then by the time we now add excess aqueous ammonia the precipitate will dissolve to form a colorless what solution and that confirms what the chloride iron and that brings us to the end of the qualitative analysis question which is 21 what marks so if you're able to learn anything from this video hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you are yet to do so and turn on your notification bell feel free to share or recommend the video to your friends also preparing to write by gc 